But the rod of correction to see them education will drive that thing far. Yes, we say, train up my child in the way. Heart I knowledge and turn so wise. Yes, yes, yes. Up, up, apply that heart I knowledge and turn so wise. Yes, 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 yes. Say, apply that heart I knowledge and turn so wise. Yes, train up a child in the way that them should go. And when them they part from it, you know, you know. In the middle of the man, till the kid in the good start to live, in the good start to live, in the good start to live, I murmur. Cover a zigatina so good, fits a moma, eat a ral. Cover a zigatina so good, fits a moma, eat a ral. Yet the goose and I guess the cover, the grin of a sewer. No, oh, 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 in the goose and I guess the cover, in the goose and the escaper, in the goose and the escaper. In the goose in the guest cover, nigger in the mess of no. In the guest that cover again, nigger in the mess of war, no. Man, mer, no. Nigger, nigger in, mer, mer, no. In the semi kefta, in the mid rima till keta. In the guest that live, I mer, mer, rima. In the guest that live, I mer, mer, rima. Cover and sing it in the ass so good. Fits a mom, I eat a ral. Cover and sing it in the ass so good. Fits a mom, I eat a ral. In the goose and the guest, in the goose and the guest, a cover. In the goose and the guest, in the goose, in the goose and the guest, a cover. 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 Negrin mer mer na oh oh, negrin mer mer na oh. In the semi kafta, in the mizram telketa, he negesta talu. Oh, salam tana, tana yistaling. Send bet salam, Shabbat shalom, Shabbat shalom. Greetings, ine aras yadinos teferi neng. Greetings, this is Wanda Manchu. This is your brother Yadon. Of the Lion of Jesus Society of His Imperial Majesty, and we're in the 34th, actually the 35th Yikrita. We just reviewed the 34th Sabbath, um, sabbatical reading Ben Midbar, just did a brief overview, Midre Beda, of that, and now we're moving to the 35th, which is for this week. This week, this is the this the week. So it's not just for the Sabbath day. The Sabbath day is basically the the family or congregational reading and remembrance. But then in the week, we are to make the time to to study it. You understand to make the time to study it. So it's the it's the weekly feeding. You understand the weekly feeding from the Torah. The Nabiyat and the Hadith or Adis Kidan. Now, the 35th Sabbatical reading is known as Wissed. Wissed. In our chart, there was a little uh, typo or error where it would read Wissed, but it actually is Wissed. 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 In the Hebrew, it's known as Naso. Naso. And it means, or the translation of it in the English is take, take, or in the phrase, take also the sum. And it's from the Torah portion of Numbers chapter 4, Numbers chapter 4, verse 21. Numbers chapter 4, verse 21. So let us go there and... And review this particular. Let's read over Numbers chapter 4, verse 21, which we know as the book of Numbers, Orit Zehulkwa, Orit Zehulkwa, 21 22 says, And then we know, Egezi Abiharim, Musin, and Di below Tenagro. And the sustainer Yahweh Baruchu spake to Musa, Moshe, Moses, saying, Ye Geda Sonina Lejocha Dimer Degmo, 
Beya bato chacho wa beto cha beya wagano chacho wema said, Take also the sum, take also the sum of the sons of Gershon, of Gershon throughout the houses of their fathers by their families, by their families. It goes on in verse 23 to state that, Ye megenanya wina dinkwana sera, ye seru zen le agalgalo ta ye mia gabutin no hulu akaslasa ameta jamro, iska amsa ameta deresa kutaracho. From 30 years old and upward until 50 years old shalt thou number them all that enter in to perform the service to do the work in the tabernacle of the congregation now it's very important that we understand as we tried to review again um the book of numbers and the intent of this particular book of numbers is a book of order. First of all, there's a beautiful mor moral the theocratic order. And it also bespeaks of both the, the, the civilian aspects as well as the, the militant aspects of the family of the king of kings and his Christ and the fam and the household of faith, which is a family. You understand? Some say church, but the true idea of church is the the household of faith. You understand? We have been the, we are the ones who've been called out, the ecclesia, called out. So there's a, this is a a family. You understand? This is a family of fear, but there are instructions because nothing is to be left to self-will to do it like you feel like doing or just do it your way or you just do you no we are to do his will you understand or, or we have no 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 part of him let's understand that every student every servant every laborer co-laborer must be accounted for therefore they must be numbered they must know what their place is what is our place in the family you understand? And also to have our own definitely assigned service. This is what numbers, this is what the book of numbers is teaching, is teaching us. As we go over this, we will see this very, very, very clearly. Now, let us look at the, the Hebrew for a moment. Now, the Hebrew, as you can see, Bamarinya. In the Amharic is called a wused, wused, which means take. But the Hebrew has something very interesting. It's naso, naso. Naso is the Hebrew for lift up. And it's the sixth word in, in the Hebrew. And it's the first distinctive word in the parasha, parasha. This is the 35th weekly Torah portion, the 35th weekly orit and sabbatical a reading in our annual Hebraic and Ethiopian Hebrew cycle of the Orit and the Torah reading. And it's the second in the book of Numbers. So this is the second reading in the book of Numbers. And it constitutes Numbers chapter 4, verse 21, to Numbers chapter 7, verse 89. Now, now, was said, Bamarinya, and Naso be Ibraist in the Hebrew, it's the longest of the 54 weekly Torah portions, and it contains 176 verses. Now, we as, as Hebrews, you understand, in the diaspora, the, or the black Jews in the diaspora, generally this will be read in, in late May or June late may or june and that's the precise time of the so-called year that we are in now as this particular portion this particular kufl 
Bamarinho or Parasha Parasha Be'ebraist as it includes the story of the consecration, the consecration of the Dinquan, the consecration of the, the Mishkan, of the tabernacle. Hebrews, we as Hebrews also read parts of the Parasha or the Kufal as Orit readings on the eight days of what's known as Hanukkah. Uh, the eight days of Hanukkah, which commemorates the re-consecration of the 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 Beit the Beta Mekdes or the temple in Jerusalem. And that's Numbers chapter seven verses one to seventeen is the Torah reading for the first day, Numbers chapter 7, verse 18 to 29, is the Torah reading for the second day, Numbers chapter 7, verses 24 to 35, is the Torah reading for the third day, Numbers chapter 7, verses 30 to 30, verse 30 to 41, is the Ori or the Torah reading for the fourth day, Numbers chapter 7, verses 36 to 47, is the Ori, the Torah reading for the fifth day, Numbers chapter 7, verse 42 to 47, is the second Torah reading for the sixth day of Hanukkah, which, because it falls on Rosh Chodesh, or, or, or the head of the new has numbers chapter 28 verses 1 to 15 as its first reading numbers chapter 7 verses 48 to 59 is the Torah reading for the seventh day when it does not fall or occur on Rosh Chodesh and Numbers chapter 7 verses 48 to 53 is the second Torah reading for the seventh day when it does not fall on Rosh Chodesh. In which case, Numbers chapter 28 verses 1 to 15 is the first reading. And Numbers chapter 7 verses 54 to Numbers chapter 8 and 4 is a Torah reading for the eighth day. Now, when a day of the Hanukkah falls on a Senbet or a Shabbat, however, the regular weekly Torah reading for that Senbet or Shabbat is the first Torah reading for that day and the following readings from the Parsha Naso are what's called the Maftir, the Maftir Torah readings, Numbers chapter 7 and 1 to verses 17 is the Maftir Torah reading for the first day and so forth. Now this may sound a little bit comp complicated, you understand, but when we are able to come together, you understand, and actually do it, you understand? It becomes very clear, it becomes very easy, and one can see the liberty you understand? So a certain amount of study is the prerequisite. You see, study to show ourselves approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So the first level, you understand, of serious discipleship, you understand, once one's re recognized, you understand, the need to be born again, you understand, to be born again from above. You see that 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 repentance is, is, is the key. The repentance is the key, my brothers and sisters. You understand? Because you can fake it to your friends. You can fake it to your families. One can fake it to others, but one cannot fake it to the Almighty or to the Almighty's people. So it's very important for us to recognize what is the order. And this book, the book of the fourth book of Moses called the book of Numbers, it's all about accountability. It's all about accountability. Nothing, nothing is left to self-will. Every, every servant must be accountable. Every servant must know their place in the family and have their own definitely assigned service. Now, what does this kufl or, or portion or parasha bebrayist in the Hebrew parasha bamarinya? Kufl, which means a portion. What does it address? 
it's important for us to ask the question, what does this portion address? It addresses the priestly duties. It addresses purifying the camp. It addresses the wife that's accused of unfaithfulness in the Hebrew called the sota. You understand? It addresses the Nazarite, the Nazarite. It addresses the priestly blessings, the priestly barakat. And it addresses the consecrating, the consecrating of the tabernacle, the consecrating of the mishkan, the consecrating of the dinquan, of, of the debter. You understand the debter, and it's it's interesting because debter is a ten, and then we have debtera as a, as well. We have the debter, you understand, which is our study, our composition notebooks. So it's interesting to see that link in the gutters between tabernacle, the word for tabernacle, the word for an unordained but learned clergyman called a debtera, as well as the debter, you understand, which is our exercise book, our copy book, our composition notebooks, where all of the Dek Amazamorit should be taking their notes during the, the yearly, you know, saying, sabbatical studies, the readings, and feedings. Now, let's look at the tabernacle and the camp. It's important for us to, to get a visual because without a, without a, a vision, Without a vision, it said that the people perish if they have no vision. So we need to get a vision of what the camp is, of what the camp is. What is the camp and what is the tabernacle and what's the relationship of the tabernacle to the camp? So now let's go over a summary of this particular Torah portion, this particular Torah reading. Once again, let's get an overview of from where to where is this particular reading now as you can see from the chart that we have you understand that this is the 35th it's called take you understand Re referring to take also the sum now the the amharic name for this sabbatical reading or portion is wused the hebraic is naso is not so and from the orit zemuse you understand or the torah reading it's it's numbers chapter 4 verses 21 to numbers chapter 7 verse 89 and that is what we will focus this is what we want to focus upon at this time getting an overview of numbers chapter 20 n numbers chapter 4 you could uh, verse 21 to Numbers chapter 7, verse 89, and it's one of the longer or longest portions right here. But what does this contain? What does this contain? So it continues the tenth part of the order of the host from the, the first of the, the Torah scroll readings for the book of Numbers. Now, what's interesting, too, is the date, is the date. When you look at verse 1 of chapter 1, let's just go there for a moment. This is something that we meant to speak on, mention in our review of uh, the sabbatical portion, um, the 34th sabbatical portion, where it says in verse 1, it says, And the sustainer Yahweh spake to Moses in the wilderness of Sina, Bemidre Bedar, Bemidbar, in the tabernacle of the congregation on the first day of the second month in the second year after they were come out of the land of Egypt saying now what's interesting about this right here is this was two years let's just understand this was, this was two years after the Beta Israel had come out of Gibbet or had come out of Egypt you understand and we'll learn that for the next 30 eight years they were wandering because of this failure because of the failure of the redeemed people there's the wilderness wandering you understand the wilderness wandering under these wilderness circumstances where israel utterly failed for 38 years and we have a whole generation 
that were unworthy to enter into his promise. This is the reason why we can note that we've had Shashimani for 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 more than for more than forty years. You understand? Know we as so called um lost but now found Beta Israel as Ethiopian Hebrews. We've had that foothold of the promised land for for more than forty years, but the failure to enter in is the very same as the failure of the Beta Israel to enter in. So that particular date concerning the first day of the second month is it corresponds to that May you heard about the May twenty first 2011 end of the world this, did you somebody tell you have you heard anything about that well that's the very same time when you do the hebraic calculation of it it's the very same time as our book of numbers of accountability or as it begins so it's interesting so when uh that preacher out there talked about the end of the world i wonder did he really recognize how that ties in with the book of numbers and with this particular people in this particular prophetic time but he said that he was a couple of months off he's actually said that he was a couple of uh, a couple of months off you understand and now he says it's october 21st which would be roughly around the time that we should be completed this particular annual um S cipher you understand of the loony the lunar solar cipher you understand of our readings or the 54 torah portions are coinciding around that time we should be entering into the what we know as the fall festivals so it's interesting because if it is the end of the world may we be prepared may we be prepared because definitely if it was may 21st many of us would would not have been prepared you know what I'm saying so this is all about being prepared this is why the torah and the sabbatical readings and feedings are very important you know what I'm saying for his people for those who are our fellows who are our brothers and mothers and and, and sisters now the contents of naso of naso the 35th uh, sabbatical reading and, and portion here's the summary the summary as we mentioned is the priestly duties purifying the camp the wife accused of unfaithfulness the Nazarite the priestly blessing the consecration of the tabernacle and now there are there are various different um, what they call the inner biblical interpretations concerning you know n numbers and concerning numbers chapter 5 and the corpse the contamination of the dead bodies and the Nazarite vow and and we want to get into exactly what does that mean and how does that how do how does that figure now this is the very this 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 is this is probably one of the, one of the fullest teachings when I say fullest teachings because one of the longest sections of scripture you understand so we may not have the opportunity in this particular in this particular um, reasoning here and explication here to go into all the details, but it's a very important. Let me just remind you, my brothers and my sisters and my mothers, this is a very important area of scripture, as each sabbatical study is. You understand? And um, um, uh, another thing we want to remind you of on a Wikipedia, if you would take the Hebraic name put it in the wikipedia search you will find there's a lot of information there as well even though it's from a a a a um, um what we call it the the modern judaism approach there's much that we still can learn by even learning that you understand by by reflecting reflecting on some of those reasoning we can get a better understanding of the bible than from the pseudo um christian backgrounds that that most folks you understand most folks have been acquainted with so if you go take the hebraic name which is the which is the secondary name that we have and look that up 
in the the Wikipedia on Wikipedia, you will find that that there is a treatment for each of the sabbatical, each of the 54 sabbatical portions have a treatment that's up there. Wikipedia is for free. All you have to do is one, two, you could take NASO, N-A-S-O, and put Parsha, short for Parasha, which is, means kufal or portion. Put NASO, Parsha, P-A-R-S-H-A, in the Wikipedia, you'll find this. Go to the bottom, and you'll see that each of the sabbatical, each of the each of the fifty-four Sabbath portions is there. And do like we have done, and and other disciples have done. Download that. You understand, and have that as a reference, as a reference point for study. It's very interesting, and hopefully, we'll get into that a, a little bit, a little bit more. But now. Let us begin off with the summary here because we have the 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 priestly the priestly the priestly duties are dealt with in this thirty fifth um portion called take or wused or in the Hebrew naso. Here Ha Elohim Baruku, the true God, told Moses, Muse, to take a census. To take accountability account, a numbering of the Gershonites. The Gershonites who were between 30 and 50 years old, who were subject to service. They were subject to service, the Agel Galot, service for the tabernacle. You understand? The tabernacle in that time is likened to the church, the Beta Christian or the, the Beta Seb. The, the family, the household of faith in this time. So it's important that we understand the order here. It was imp very important. So there's a certain age. Notice that there's a certain age. If we review and those who haven't, we'll encourage you to go over the first four chapters and hopefully you'll be able to find Ben Midbar on the Wikipedia. You understand? And to give some additional notes as well there, some very good summary notes, you understand, if I and I may say, you understand, that can help ones and ones to really grasp, to really get a good grasp of what the scriptures is teaching as well as the applicability to us in this prophetic time of Rastafari revelation, the revelation of the King of Kings in Christ. Now, the Gershonites, and these Gershonites, the age is between 30 years and 50 years old. 30 years and 50 years old. It's interesting because when it is speaking in uh, Levitic um, numbers, numbers going into, yeah, numbers chapter 1. When it is speaking, it says from 20 years old and upward and all that are able to go forth to war in Israel, it shows that when ones are 20 years old and upward, that is the qualifying age to be able to go forth to war in Israel. So there is a beautiful order here that concerns ages, certain particular ages that we are. You understand? Know Even to serve in the tabernacle in this particular sabbatical portion that we have in Numbers chapter 4, verses 21 to 23, where we're at right now, we're speaking of the Gershonites, is saying between 30 and 50 years to serve in the tabernacle. So if one is 20 years old, you understand? Know then one should be learning the Watadarawi Timharit, you understand? Know or military service where the church is. Is militant. The church must be militant in order to be triumphant. But there's a certain age group for that. Now, if one now is serving in the subject to service in the tabernacle or in the ministry, it gives a specific age there as well. So there's certain things that are age, certain duties that are age appropriate to understand the order in our father's house. Now, the Gershonites have the duty. Under the direction, under the direction of Haron or Aaron, the son of, 
of 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 Ithamar, you understand, to carry the cloths, to carry the cloths of the, the Dinquan, the Mishkan, the tabernacle of meeting with its covering, the covering of the the Tachash, you understand, the Tachash skin on top of it, the screen for the entrance of the tent of meeting, the, the hangings of the enclosure, the screen at the entrance of the gate of the enclosure surrounding the tabernacle, the cords thereof, the altar, and all their service equipment, all the service equipment and accessories, that was the Gershonites solemn and sacred responsibility and numbers chapter 4 verses 24 to 28 it outlines that now Musa Moses was also to take a, a census of the Mer Merarites who were between the ages of 30 and 50 years old we learn this in numbers chapter 4 at verse 29 at verse 29 and um, verse 29 and verse verse 30. Now, the Merarites, they had responsibility under the direction of Ithamar for the planks, the bars, the posts, the sockets of the Mishkan of the dinquan, of the tabernacle, of the tent, and the post around the enclosure and their sockets, the pegs and the cords. We find that out in, in the very same chapter of Numbers chapter 4, verses 31 to 33. Now, there's a relative population, an adult population of the Levite divisions, because we're speaking about like the Levite divisions at this particular point in time. And there's a chart that we have here that um, we find rather interesting. It just, it's something good that we can go and discuss in some details later on, but we want to give, give you a familiarity with this. The division now of the Levites. We have the Kohathites, we have the Gershonites, we have the Merarites, the general population of each the share of, of, of total that makes that 100%, the, the rank according to their population, the number of adults, the share of that total, the, the rank by the adults, which is, a, is, is interesting when you look at the rank by population, and the adult share of division, in other words, the division of labor. A division of labor. Now, Moses, Aaron, Haron, and the chieftains thus recorded the Levite age from 30 to 50 as follows. And according to Numbers chapter 4, verses 34 to 39, we get a rough a total population of 8,580. Now, the Kohathites had 2,750, the Gershonites had 2,630, and the Merarites had 3,200. Now, what, what's very beautiful about this is, is, the, is, is the order. There, there's order at every point that gives a good division of labor. Now, you have to remember that the Beta Israel, the Bani Israel, Israel at this point were already in the wilderness. They had to be self sustaining. They had to be self sufficient. You understand in that sense. They had to be a self sufficient group. They had to be able to to be independent of Egypt of a like today we are still caught up in in, in Babylon. We still are caught up in in, in, in the wilderness here in the so-called Americas. But in this point of the Beta Israel, they were already out there on their own. Now, this is what the Almighty, this is the order that the Almighty had given them. You, know, you understand? Not just for them in their time, but for also us in spirit and in truth in this time. So it's important for us to, to make a note of that. But let's touch on the, the the next part of the 35th 
sabbatical reading and feeding. And this concerns purifying the purification of the camp. Now, the sustainer, Egezi Abihir, Lotu Subhat, Yahweh Lotu Subhat Baruchu, he had directed the Israelites, the Beta Israel, to remove, to remove from camp anyone with an eruption or a discharge and anyone that was defiled that was defiled by a corpse so that they would not defile the camp so that they would not defile the camp now we have this in numbers chapter numbers chapter 5 verses verses uh Verses one to four. Let's go over this. Besma ab wulman fisuk dus ahadu amlak orit zehulqa miraf amis kagut eran in dem milo egziabi harimu sen and di below tenagro. And the stena Yahweh spake to Musa, Moses, Moshe, saying, Ye Israel le jocha lema tamun hulu. Fesasha negrima yalebetin no hulu. Beresama ye rekasa no hulu. Kaseferu and diawat u zezacho. Command the children of Israel, the Bane Israel, that they put out of the camp every leper, lemma tamun hulu. And everyone that hath an issue, Fesasha Negrim Yalebetino Hulu. And whosoever is defiled by the dead, Beresama Yerekaso no Hulu, Kaseferu and Diawot Uzazacho, Kuter Sost. Wendamuna say to now to in a be mekakalu be mekakalu a ye mader betina seferacho win and aya rekusua kaseferua out acho. Both male and female shall ye put out without outside the camp shall ye put them that they defile not their camps, that they defile not their camps in the midst whereof I dwell. Now this is this is a very important this is hygienic here. This is the, this is like a medical what they say, a medical directive. The Almighty is giving a medical directive to the Beit Israel in that time, and we need to take note of it in this particular time. Kuter Arat says, Israel lima lejochen di hua daragu, kasafru wa watuacho egzi ab hera musena inda tenagro. Israel lejo chandi hu adaragu. It says, and the children of Israel did so. Israel lejo chandi hu adaragu. And di hu adaragu. They did like this and put them out without the camp. Kasafaru awat uacho. As Egezi Abihir spake to Musa, so did the children of Israel. Israel. Now it's very interesting how this particular part, when we look at the language, when we look at the first part of verse four of chapter five, and the children of Israel did so, and then says, So did the children of Israel Babamarinya says, Yes Aralim Lejochin Dihu Adaragu, who let Gize says Yes Aral Lejochin Dihu Adaragu that they did like this. Now some would say, Well, why is this important why is this, is this purifying the camp it is keeping a clean camp so the defilement of the camp is 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 dealt with in this particular 
chapter here, chapter 5. Now, Ha Elohim, the true God, told Musa to direct the Beta Israel, the Israelianoch, the Israelites, that when one wronged a fellow Israelite, when, when a Hebrew wronged a Hebrew, an Israelite wronged his brother, thus breaking faith with Ha Elohim. So when we as Rastafari, we wrong a fellow Rastafari, one who is in spirit and in truth as we are to be in spirit and truth. We thus break faith with Ha Elohim, with Jah, Rastafari, if you please, and realize his guilt. Now, when that happens and one realizes his guilt, he was to do what? He was to confess the wrong and make restitution to the one wronged in the principal amount plus one fifth in the principal amount plus one fifth now this is mentioned in numbers chapter 5 verse 5 to verse 7 let's go over this let's cover this uh and below to and the stain of yahweh spake to moses saying Le isra le jocha negracho. When the woim seita ye egezi avi harinat izaza ye telalefazen, so a ye mi a sarawin a hat yata be sara. Beziama so lai bedel beon. Be saraw hat yata ye nazes. Speak to the children of Israel. When a man or woman shall commit any khatiyat, any missing of the mark that men commit to do a trespass against Egezi Abihar Lotu Subhat against Yahweh Baruch Hu, and that person be guilty, yet Wesadonima Bemulu Yemelis. A Mr. Nyawinima Yich Amurbeta Lebedalawima Sowa Yisto. Then they shall confess. They shall confess. Besarauhat Yata Yinazes Yinazes. They shall confess their Hatiat which they have Besarau Besarau Hatiat Yinazes. And he shall recompense his trespass with the principle, with the principle thereof, and add to it the fifth part thereof, and give it to him against whom he hath trespassed. Against whom he had trespassed. So this is this is our law this 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 is our law and this is our order this is how we resolve differences and disputes because it goes on to say that if the one wronged if the one who was wronged had no uh, kinsman no kinsman to whom restitution could be made the amount repaid was to go to the priest along with a ram, a ram of expiation, along with a ram of expiation. Negergin ye melissa let zena so yo a zemeda by no ro, sile bedel egezi avi hera ye mia meliso neger le kahenu a yuhun. Yehima sile arsua masa tesereya kamia de regabeta aura bega belai yichemer. But if the man have no kinsman to recompense the trespass to, let the trespass be recompensed to Egezi Abihir, to Yahweh, the sustainer Yahweh, even to the Kahin. Even le kahinu yuhun, beside the ram of atonement, whereby an atonement shall be made for him. 
And then it says this right here in verse verse 9 it says ye israelim lejoch le kahenu ye miyaqarbuta ye tekedese ye manasat qurban hulu la arsu wa yuhun and every offering of all the holy things of the children of Israel which they bring to the priests shall be his and every offering of all the holy things of the Bane Israel which they bring to the priests le kahnu yemiyak arbuta shall be his la arsu la arsu yehun la arsu yehun and every man's hollow things shall be his and every man's holy things yet a kadasa yeso nagar hulu so wema le kahnu yemiya sat owo hulu la arsu yehun it shall be his now it's important for us to understand this why well let's go on and let's learn this now similarly any gift among the sacred donations that the beta israel that the israelites offered was to be the priest to keep we find this out in numbers chapter 5 verses 9 and uh, verses 9 to 10. now this is important this is very important. These are all principles that we have to learn. We can reason on these things. We can study on these things. But we have to learn this. So this is like our boot camp, the sabbatical readings and the feedings. This is how we prepare. You understand? And other brothers and sisters and others, mothers who are also studying this, we would know them because when we are in the situation where we have to apply it, some will know this. Some will be able to, in spirit and in truth, act off of the off of the, the applicable principles of this, while others will not. And this is how you will know them. That's why it says study and show yourself approved to God as a workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing or explaining the word of truth. Now, what we're going to touch on right here. This part of of the Wusad of the Salasa Mistenyao uh, when uh, Senbet uh, Minbab or Nibbab or reading for the 35th Sabbath that's known as Wusad, Wusad uh, Bamarinya in Amharic and Naso Be Ibrahist Akwankwa and the Hebrews known as Naso. Here is a section that speaks of the wife that is accused of unfaithfulness the wife that is accused of unfaithfulness and it begins exiabi harim musain and di below tanagaro and yahweh the sustainer spake to moses saying le israel le jocha nigaracho yeah manya wema so amista ka arusu afek ak abitil Speak to the children of Israel and say to them, if any man's wife go aside and commit a trespass against him, Arswama tesaura bitarakesa miskarima bai norbata be minzarima bata gang and a man lie with her carnally or sexually and it be hid from the eyes of her husband her house bond her husband or her ras bond if you please and be kept close and she be defiled and there be no witness against her neither she be taken with the manner 
that's interesting right there. Neither like neither does it bother her. Kutera Asara Arat, verse 14 of Numbers chapter 5, it says, Bebaluam lai yek in Ottoman fessa be met a bet. Urswama sitta rekisa slamistu a beak ena. Oim Urswa sata rekisa yek in Ottoman fessa be met a bet. Slamistu ma beak ena. And the spirit of jealousy come upon him the baluam lie upon and and upon or against her husband ye kin art manifest be met a bet if the spirit of kin art the spirit of jealousy be met a bet if it comes on him if it comes against him and he be jealous of his wife selemistuma be kenna and she be defiled or or if the spirit of jealousy come upon him and he be jealous of his wife and she be not defiled so it may be a situation that she might have done something or she might not have done something kutar asara mist yaso Mistuna would a kahinua yam tat. Ye if Miss Feriama is a renya ja gepsa duke eta corbana sela erswa yam ta. Ye in otta corbana no winna. Hat yat nema ye mia sasiba ye metasebia corbano winna. Zayt. Ta yafisis beta it anem aich amur beta. Then shall the man bring his wife to the priest, and he shall bring her offering for her, which is the tenth part of an effa of barley meal. He shall pour no oil upon it nor put frankincense thereon for it is an offering of jealousy ye kin art kurban no winna an offering of memorial ye metasebia kurban no winna bringing bringing iniquity bringing iniquity to remembrance kutar kutar asara sidista kahenu ma ya karbatal be egezi av harima fita ya komatal and the priest shall bring her near and set her before yahweh set her before egezi av har Kutera asra sabata kahenuma yetek edesa hat yata beshakala ika ye westal kahenuma be mader yawa wustakalo to be ya westo be wuchalaya ye rich a while. And the priest shall take holy water in an earthen vessel and of the dust that is in the floor of the tabernacle the priest shall take and put it into the water kutar asara cement kahenu ma setituna be egezi abi herafiti ya komatal ye setitune marasi yigelt ala be ijwam le metasebi ya yemi ono wena ye ihla qurban le kinata qurban ya norala be kahenu ma ija ergmanna yemi yamet aw marara u khayhonal en the priest shall set the woman before Yahweh and uncover the woman's head and put the offering of memorial in her hands, which is the kinat korban, the jealousy offering. 
and the priest shall have in his hand the bitter water that causeth the curse. Utera asara zetain kahnu ma yam latal seti tunema endi ha yilatal leila wenda ala tenyash balash nema ala tawush arasish nema la rekashish indohone ergaman na kamiya meta kazi merara wukha and the priest shall charge her by an oath and say to the woman if no man have lain with thee and if thou hast not gone aside to uncleanness with another instead of thy husband be thou free from this bitter water that causeth the curse kutar haya negar gin but balshina titesha rekesesha indohone kabalshima leila kawendagara tenyetesha indohone but if thou hast gone aside to another instead of thy husband and if thou be defiled and some man have lain with thee beside thine husband kutara haya an kahinuma setituna be mergema mahalla yamalatal kahinuma setitun egazi abi hara chinshina ya sala sala hodishnema ya nefa Egazi abi her le mergamina le mahalla be his bisha mekakala yadargish. Then the priest shall charge the woman with an oath of cursing, and the priest shall say to the woman, Egazi abi her the stain of Yahweh make thee a curse and an oath among thy people. When the sustainer Yahweh doth make thy thigh to rot and thy belly to swell kutar hayahu let argaman ma yamiya meta yihu kha wada hodisha yigba hodishna ma yinfau chinshna ma ya besib so wa yilatal sayti tu amen amen and this water that causeth the curse shall go into thy bowels to make thy belly to swell and thy thigh to rot. And the woman shall say, Amen, Amen. Uter Haya Source, verse 23. Kahinu menazihina mergamocha be saleda yisfewal. Bemerara wima wucha ye demesis ye demesis sawal. And the priest shall write these curses in a book, and he shall blot them out with the bitter water. Kutar haya arata ergmana ye miyamet awinema merara wucha le seti tuwa yit et atal. Ye ergamanu mawucha be gebabata gize merara yohonal. And he shall cause the woman to drink the bitter water that causeth the curse. And the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter. Kutera. Haya a mist, verse 25. Kahinuma yek in atuna ye ihila korban kaseti tue ija ye westal. Ye il numa korban be ekezi avi herfita ye wazau ye wazawa zawal. Wode masawiya wima ya met. Then the priest shall take the jealousy offering out of the woman's hand and shall wave the offering before the sustainer Yahweh and offer it 
upon the altar kuter haya sedista kahinu maka ihlu wakorbanda anda ifinya mulu le metasebbiya wasto be mesawiya wala ya yakat lawal kaziyama bekhala le seititu wa wuhawina yat et atal and the priest shall take an handful of the offering, even the memorial thereof, and burn it upon the altar, and afterwards shall cause the woman to drink the water. Guter haya sabat. Wuchawina kat et ata bechala endihe yonal. Rekasana be balwa laya menizera endonech. Ergamanen yemiamet awa wucha gabuto merara yohon batal. Hodowama yi nefal, chinawama yi selesalal, setituma behizwa mekakela le merge matonalech. And when he hath made her drink the water, then it shall come to pass that if she be defiled and have done trespass against her husband that the water that causeth the curse shall enter into her and become bitter and her belly shall swell and her thighs shall rot and the woman shall be a curse among her people cement verse 28 Yal rekasecha yal nuur in dohonech, nisu tohonalech, lejochnim, lejochnim, tarega zalech. And if the woman be not defiled, but be clean, then she shall be free and shall conceive seed. Kutarocha. Haya zetenina salasa sait balwana tita be rekeset gize woim be solayek in ottoman fest be met abet gize sila mistuma bek ena gize ye kina otta huga yino saiti tu nema be egezi avi her feet yak umat yak umat kahenuma in de zi Hig hulu yadarigbat. This is the law of jealousies. When a wife goeth aside to another instead of her husband and is defiled, or when the spirit of jealousy come upon him and he be jealous over his wife and shall set the woman before the sustainer Yahweh, and the priest shall execute upon her all. This law, Kuter Salasa An, verse 31, to complete this chapter. So Yoem Kahatiata Nesu Yohonal, Saititu Mahatiatawana Tishakamalech, Tishakamalech. Then shall the man be guiltless from iniquity, and this woman shall bear her iniquity now we decided to go through that in in some of its more vivid details now of course there's many out there who uh, might regard this from some idea of sexism but that's imagined that this law here, the law of jealousies, is somehow sexist or is biased against the woman and to the man is to be imagined. Is, uh, and when one's come to such a, a assumption, uh, assumption such as that, it's clear that they are not understanding this in this proper context. Let's go over this for a moment because this is concerning the wife accused of unfaithfulness. Now we have to put the Beta Israel 
in the time and in the context in the context you understand of the time now some call this the the the, the ritual of the sota mm -hmm. in this particular ritual of the sota the man was to bring his wife to the priest along with barley flour as a meal offering of jealousy now the priest was to dissolve some earth from the floor of the tabernacle into some sacral water sacred water in an earthen vessel now the priest was to bear the woman's head and place the meal offering on her hands and adjure the woman if innocent if innocent to be immune to harm from the water of bitterness but if guilty to be cursed to have her thigh sag and her belly uh, distend and the woman say t2 was to say amen amen now the priest was to write these curses down and rub the writing off into the water of bitterness and make the woman drink the water now the priest was to elevate the meal offering present it on the altar and burn a token part of it on the altar now if she had broken faith with her husband the water would cause her belly to distend and her thigh to sag and the woman was to become a curse among her people but if she the woman was innocent she would remain unharmed and be able to bear children now many would say this sounds to some people this sounds like like something else but there is a very there's a very holistic explanation of why with the proper conditions this actually works you understand for the guilty it it curses the guilty and it vindicates the innocent and in another more detailed part of the teaching on on the sota or the wife accused of unfaithfulness we will touch on that but this also can be considered a medical directive just as we mentioned earlier that that one who um ones who were defiled were to be put apart from the camp so they don't defile the people the key word in that part was that that yahweh said that he himself dwells amongst his people so when we look into revelation where it says that god will dwell among his people you understand he will dwell among his people you understand who are also set apart to his will so in learning his will here it's important for us to learn his will so we can do his will we cannot do his will if we have not learned his will so more to come on that very very it's a very very important subject matter right there to touch on and y'all willing we will touch on that in the water feet in the future portion so for right now we're going to take a pause for the cause i'm going to pick up on this 35th sabbatical study naso in the hebrew and wussed bamarinya in the next part and we're going to pick up with the nazarite the vow of the nazarite in the in the next portion of this particular study so stay tuned my brothers and sisters Shabbat Shalom, Senbet Salam. What in this? Oh, yes, no, for them, I'm pushing, 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 pushing. Shalom, Allah. Open correction is the better, better than the secret affection. Whosoever dig in the pit will fall there, there into it. Well, uh, honor is unseemly, it's unseemly for a fool. Honor is unseemly, so fool, fool, go to school. Answer, answer them not, answer them not according to them folly. Answer them not, answer them not, answer them not according to them folly. No for them, no for them, no for them, them, them. Listen up.
ji hui be ku pu so cha tik na li ji li ji li ji hui be ku pu so cha tik na khadar su hu garim me ho me na